capex push external sector buffers and a broadly supported fiscal and monetary policy environment would help sustain recovery momentum much improved health of the banking sector significant deleveraging by the corporate sector and gradually improving capacity utilization reinforce the case of an investment cycle over the next 3 to 5 years coming now to the bank's performance we completed second year of planning cycle 5 strategy in quarter 4 I will spend a minute on PC5 update before going into a cortex specific development. We have also added a few slides in investor prevent presentation providing a status update on PC5. The financial year 22 proved to be a challenging year due to the internal as well as external factors. While we saw spread of covid second wave during the first half of the year, we faced whistleblow allegations in the second half followed by a covid third wave. The bank responded with measures to address these concerns concerns comprehensively through slow growth in first half focus on collections building conservative con contingent provisions ahead of the slippages conducting internal and external review on microfinance operations and maintaining traction on consumer corporate and digital initiatives with these concerns getting behind us We steadily pivoted towards growth with loan growth improving every quarter from 3% in March 21 to 12% in March 22. We also project, project progressed on our key initiatives for PC5 retail liability search momentum on retail liabilities were maintained with a share of share of retail as per LCR increasing from 37% to 41%. CAC ratio improved from 41.7% to 42.7%. and top 20 deposit concentration fallen from 22% to 17% the cod at 4.6% is at the lowest level in our journey over several years fine tuning corporate bank approach corporate bank saw growth of 20% after last year sell down and net slippages of around 60 basis points witnessing one of the best years in recent past we have seen improving improvement in average rating improving from 2.76 to 2.69 granularity in fees and reduction in long term loan as shown in the investor presentation holistic rural banking rural banking franchise saw a scale up bharat merger of bharat merchant stores agri business along with the recovery in vehicle and microfinance these improved shares of rural loans from 19% to 20% this year our domains our domains contributed 43% of the loan book and have outperformed the industry during covid wave our disbursements in vehicle finance and microfinance have picked up well after a brief slowdown due to covid 2 diamond portfolio too participated in the strong growth in exports new growth boosters we progressed well on scaling up our new initiatives such as affluent banking NRI tractor financing small corporates with less than 500 crore turnover merchant acquiring affordable housing and digital 2.0 overall we navigate and uh, navigated an otherwise turbulent year with outcomes broadly in line with our communication throughout the year we had consistent improvement in return ratios as well as growth metrics every quarter and our balance sheet continues to be at its strongest level in the last several years coming to the quarter specific developments acceleration in loan growth we achieved 5 5% 5 quarter on quarter growth driven by 5% quarter on quarter growth in consumer 4% quarter on quarter growth in corporate segment the year on year loan growth book improved to 12% from 10% previous quarter all retail products including vehicle microfinance and consumer saw one of the healthiest disbursements ever during quarter 4 the corporate book has been maintained steady momentum driven by small corporates this broad based disbursement growth was a key outcome for the quarter our deposit mobilization continues a pace driven by granular customers our deposits grew 3% quarter on quarter and 15% year on year including casa growth of 5% quarter on quarter and 17% year on year the growth in retail deposit as per lcr accelerated to 6% quarter on quarter and 26% year on year the growth of deposit is achieved along with the reduction in cost of deposit by 6 basis point quarter on quarter and 43 basis point year on year digital 2.0 during the year 
we the bank created digital center of excellence investing in building new capabilities and talent base we launched indus easy credit merchant acquiring and vehicle finance portfolios and are being scaled up the other two individual and sme offerings are planned for the launch in the current year the digital transactions continue to grow from forming 92% of the total with strong growth in mobile transactions up 33% and whatsapp banking 2x yoy asset quality we saw reduction in both gross and net slippages during the quarter across consumer vehicle and microfinance business our net slippages have come down from 0.9% to 0.6% quarter on quarter our restructured book has reduced from 3.3% to 2.6% quarter on quarter and continues to perform well specifically in vehicles while we saw slippages from corporate restructured book we have not written back any provision from contingency buffer our gnpa was down from 2 to 2.48% from 2.48% to 2.27% and net nps reduced from 0.7% to 0.64% quarter on quarter our contingent provisions are at 3328 crores with total loan loan related provisions at 152% of gross npa healthy profitability continues to remain strong retail disbursements and falling cost of deposit aided in improving our net margin to 4.2% our client fees continued momentum growing at 8.8% quarter on quarter our cost accelerated due to business revival as well as investments in technology and distribution re- resulting in cost to income ratio of 42.6% overall our operating profit remains healthy at 5.8% for the quarter steady improvement in return ratios our profit after tax grew 13% quarter on quarter and 51% year on year to 1401 crores our return on assets improved to 1.51% and return on equity was at 11.9% for quarter 4 Continued improvement in return ratios and low risk density has ensured ca- healthy capital adequacy ratio at 18.42% versus 17.38% YOY. Now coming to individual businesses, vehicle finance. Our vehicle finance disbursements for the quarter were at 9,986 crore, reflecting 13% quarter on quarter and 19% year on year growth. Our full disbursements at 32,000 crore surpassed previous COVID level despite weak quarter one due to COVID second wave. Within vehicle categories, we saw healthy disbursements across commercial vehicles, construction and equipment, utility vehicles, tractors, and cars. Disbursements in two and three wheelers remained subdued. We have gained market share in less commercial vehicles, construction equipment, tractors, and cars during the year. We have seen activity levels across our customer base increasing during the quarter. The vehicle supply constraints have ensured adequate capacity utilization for existing vehicles. Sizes burden without considerable impact on their viability. The small road transport transport operator segment has seen good freight demand during the last couple of quarters. The segment refrained from exuberant vehicle purchase since pandemic resulting in near normal capacity utilizations now. This should pave way for fresh demand once fuel prices ease down. Two of our peak product segments that is bus and three wheelers have also seen utilization improving as covid restrictions are withdrawn to a large extent. Three wheeler segment is quickly getting back to normalcy including demand for fresh vehicles after a long time. but bus segment 2 is expected to see fresh demand couple of quarters down the road as a result our vehicle finance restructured book has reduced from 3769 crore to 3298 crore quarter on quarter the collection from the restructured book improved further to 90% during the quarter collection efficiency from the rest of the book is back to normalcy Overall we remain optimistic about the vehicle finance business outlook for the current year. The segment has withstood increased fuel prices till now. We continue to add to our distribution, invest in our digital ecosystem and maintain rational pricing to ensure growth and risk adjusted returns across the cycle. Microfinance We were cautious on microfinance disbursements in quarter 3 due to potential third covid wave. 
focused on collection and completion of business reviews. As you know, we shared findings of independent review in March. With these issues getting behind us, our microfinance disbursements bounced back nicely during the quarter. The microfinance book grew to 30,612 crores with 16% year-on-year growth. Our standard book collections, excluding restructured loan book, improved further to 99.1% in March 22 compared to 97.5% in December 21, while the collection efficiency of new client source during financial year 22 was at 99.5%. The net slippage during the quarter was Rs. 696 crores and cumulatively for financial year 22 was 2,547 crores. This was broadly in, our line, in line with our slippage expectations for the year and we saw severe impact of COVID second wave specifically in rural India. We are carrying over 90% coverage on gross NPS. Our 30 to 90 DPD book has fallen from 5% to 2.6% during the quarter. With this reduction in overdue book, limited impact of COVID third wave on the portfolio and focus and focus on collection, we believe the credit cost in microfinance should get back and see soon. A merchant acquiring business managed by BFIL has scaled up impressively during this year despite multiple macroeconomic challenges. The loan book outstanding grew to rupees 1,943 crores from 1,463 crores quarter on quarter. The number of borrowers under this book increased to 324,000 from 2,60,000 quarter on quarter. The merchant acquiring book has been consistently reporting net collection efficiency of more than 98 for the past three quarters and the credit cost has been less than 1.5%. Indusind Bank, through BFIL, has been taking banking to the doorstep of its customers and we feel there is a large untapped potential in terms of liability sourcing in rural India. While still small, we, are st we, are, we still are happy to share that we are able to mobilize 1,400 crores from the clients served by Bharat Financial. We, look for, we are looking at various means to reach the last mile and efforts are on to make Indusind the primary banking customer of our valued of our valued customers. Overall, we believe microfinance business is steadily coming back to normalcy after a severe second wave. The activity levels are consistently improving and with expectation of another year of good monsoon, the business is expected to show steady performance in the coming year. Global diamond and jewelry business. The Indian diamond cutting and manufacturing industry had a healthy growth recovery during financial year 22, showing a 50% growth in exports. A diamond book too grew by 29% year on year on the back of strengthening exports and diamond prices. The business so far has not seen any material impact except for reduction in business volume due to ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. As you know, we are a working capital provider at the top end of the diamond and diamond studded jewelry manufacturing customers in formal economy. We are engaged with all stakeholders and monitoring the situation closely. On the base case, remains that the conflict may result in slower growth in diamond business, which although may not create an asset quality issue, but may, may, may impact growth in assets and income in the short run. The business, however, is only 4% of the loan book and thus overall impact on the bank should not be material. There has been no NPS or restructuring in this segment. Corporate bank. A corporate loan book has maintained a steady performance growing around 5% quarter on quarter consistently throughout the year. We had realigned the stock as well as flow of the corporate book towards revised underwriting framework. This has played out well during the course of the year. Growth was driven largely by large and mid corporates, growing by 20% year on year. The growth was backed by increased disbursements and working capital drawings, specifically in a strategic customer group. This quarter was categorized by high activity levels with good disbursements as well as payments to prepayments due to deleveraging. Small corporates grew 26% year on year, elevate on the small base. There are corporates with turnover. These are corporates with turnover less than 500 crores, especially in SME, some supply chain finance program. The proportion of A and above rated consumers has also improved from 68% to 71% YOY, with weighted average rating improving from 2.76 to 2.69. During the quarter, our corporate restructured book reduced from 17 billion to 9.6 billion. 
we saw restructured exposure in the construction segment of 5.8 million being repaid we also saw restructured exposure in a retail group of 1.4 billion slipping into npa and fully provided for the restructured book also includes around 4 billion from other entities in the same group which are performing as of now the bank is carrying provision towards the restructure as well as np accounts on the retail book our exposure to spread telco was at 30 billion as of march 22 with subsequent to the quarter and saw meaningful reduction of 1150 crores in april our exposure as on date stands at 18.5 billion including fund based exposure of 1000 billion and balance non fund based exposure overall we remain confident on the look out for the corporate sector banking sector credit group our interaction with corporates do indicate rekindling interest in private capex government spending on infrastructure manufacturing boost through production linked incentives rising new economic companies stronger balance sheet etc are all point towards likelihood of a fresh cap capex cycle across the country we having weathered challenging times over the last 1 to 2 years are now well positioned to capitalize the market opportunity other retail assets our retail asset loan book accelerated to 6% quarter on quarter driven by secured as well as unsecured assets the retail asset business saw recovery in disbursement post covid quarter 3 which was further strengthened in quarter 4 Credit cards continue to deliver strong performance, and the spending of 13,800 crore for March, reflecting 42% year-on-year growth. Our business banking segment has shown 5% quarter-on-quarter growth. We have we have been cautious on this segment due to COVID as well as loan pricing issues. We are now comfortable on both the fronts, resulting in strong disbursements. Our new customer acquisition run rate nearly doubled from financial year 21 as COVID impact receded and distribution led strategy picked up. The loan against property book also grew 2% quarter on quarter after being stagnant for a year. The growth was achieved by increasing disbursement and easing competitive pressure on prepayments. We expect growth momentum in retail business business to continue in the current financial year. We have do however remain watchful of inflationary economic conditions particularly on the unsecured consumption spend now coming to liabilities deposit grew 15% year on year and 17% year on year growth in current and savings account respectively and retail deposit as per lcr grew by 26% year on year the growth is achieved along with the reduction in cost of deposit a cost of deposit reduced to 4.60 from 4.66% showing a decline of 6 basis point during the quarter and 145 basis point cumulatively in 2 years we reduced concentration of top 20 deposits from 22% to 17% year on year the certificate of deposits have remained a small component of 3% of our overall deposits affluent and total aum stood at 60 Including deposits of 35,000 crore, affluent business also contributed to fee of 325 crore for the current year, growing 50% year on year. Deposit and NAS segment have been holding up well at rupees 26,800 crore, despite weak fresh NRI deposit inflows in the country. We resumed branch expansion after COVID-2 eased in second half of the year, taking branch count to 2,265 from 2015 for, for, from September. We plan to add another 200 to 250 branches during the year. A saving account was also recognized as the best savings product by Financial Express Bank Best Bank Award 2022. Our seamless client servicing with Minimal client disruption throughout the pandemic was recognized by the Digital Banker Award Award for outstanding response to COVID-19. Our retail deposit mobilization has been a cornerstone of PC5 strategy. We have seen a sea change in deposit franchise from deposit attrition in March 20 to massive surplus in March 22, coupled with strengthened deposit profile. Overall, we remain committed to liabilities, like to committed to liabilities-led growth strategy with emphasis on retail deposit. 
the deposit mobilization is likely to see increasing competition due to tightening liquidity as well as potential pickup in credit growth our investments in physical as well as digital distribution should help us maintain positive momentum the growth will also be aided by increasing market visibility as well as new the new segments such as agency business digital traction the bank has created a digital ex- center of excellence and is taking a comprehensive view to deploy new age digital platforms and build end to end digital client value propositions we have built new capabilities and infused a lot of specific talent in digital we have set up a digital factory which is now a 100 member team across digital product advanced analytics digital marketing digital partnership digital revenue and growth roles across driving a digital re- agenda along with our technology partners as mentioned at the beginning of the year we are focused on five areas namely easy credit for unsecured retail loans digital ecosystem for vehicles particularly in the used segment merchant solutions differentiated payments and fine and finance solutions for individuals sme trade and credit set during the year we launched three of these five initiatives as follows indicent easy credit for individuals is one of its kind end to end omni channel digital journey this solution provides instant sanction and dispersal capability enabling superior client employee and channel partner experience we already have close to 200 offline partners live on the platform and several on- online partner in the process of integration into the stack consequently 84% of the card origination business is now digital up from 37% a year ago the cost of origination too is down by 60% versus traditional model the stack will be soon extended to personal loans as well indecent easy credit for business owners provides digital journey journey for msme clients seeking secured unsecured loans up to 2 crore it's a completely digital process where they're leveraging advanced analytics to give an in principle sanction to msme clients within 15 minutes for loan and up to up to 2 crore in the form of unsecured term loans or secured overdraft the stack will be extended to other msme offerings as well Indus Merchant Solution app is is all in one stack for retailers with to bring their payments, lending, and banking needs together under a single umbrella. We went live in quarter three and are seeing good traction already with close to sixty thousand user base and seventy five percent of the users being new to bank and another twenty percent of existing clients of the bank wanting to avail payment proposition on the back of digital merchant stack. Vehicle business launched easy launched Indus Easy Wheels portal, which hosts ancillary services like road aside assistance, mechanic services, insurance, which is the first of its kind in the market. This portal also hosts the repossessed vehicle of the bank for auction and provides a smooth user experience for anyone who is looking for pre-owned vehicles. We are proud to share that the Easy Credit was recognized as the best new product launch for the year loans by the Digital Banker and and as the Global Retail Banking Innovation Award and Indus Merchant Solution was awarded outstanding Digital CX SME Award in the re- recently concluded Digital CX Award 2022. The other two initiatives of Digital 2.0 Millennial and SME offerings are planned to launch in the current year. During the year, we also strengthened the partnership, adding new strategic partners to our platform. Our mobile app continues to see strong user penetration, growing by 20% year on year, and our monthly active users and mobile transactions increased by 33% year on year. On WhatsApp banking, we continue to see healthy traction, with monthly active users and transactions increasing nearly 2x YOY. Overall, 92% of our transactions are digital, and nearly 70% of the service requests are processed digitally. Now, coming to the financial performance for the quarter. Net interest income for quarter four was at rupees 3,985 crores, grew 13% year on year, and 5% quarter on quarter in line with the loan growth. Net interest margin improved during the quarter from 4.10 to 4.20. The improvements were driven by continued reduction in the cost of deposit from 4.66 to 4.60. Other income grew 7 by 7 percent quarter year on year and 2 percent quarter on quarter. Quarterly, excluding trading income, grew by 8 percent quarter on quarter and 9 percent year on year. Share of retail fees has improved from 58 percent to 64 percent of total fee. Operating expenses grew by 15% driven by recovery in retail business. 
इन्वेस्टमेंट इन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ग्रोथ आ ब्रांच नेटवर्क सॉ एडिशन ऑफ 162 एंड सिक्सटी टू ब्रांचेज ड्यूरिंग द क्वार्टर टेकिंग अ ब्रांच काउंट टू टू थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फाइव आर ओवरऑल कॉस्ट टू इनकम रेशियो इंक्रीज टू फोर्टी टू पॉइंट सिक्स वर्सेज फोर्टी वन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर ऑन दी एसेट क्वालिटी एंड द प्रोविजनिंग फ्रंट आर स्ट्रेस पूल हैज सीन मीनिफुल रिडक्शन विच इंक्लूड्स ग्रॉस एंड नेट स्लिपेजेज हैव कम डाउन क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर ड्रिवन बाय रिडक्शन इन माइक्रो फाइनेंस एंड व्हीकल फाइनेंस Net slippages for the quarter was were at 0.6% of loans versus 0.9% for previous quarter. Our restructured book has seen a reduction of 1,359 crores and moved from 3.3% to 2.6%. Around 53% of this book originates from vehicle finance, where performance has been as per our expectation with collection efficiency of 90% for March. The micro finance collection efficiency on standard book, excluding restructured. Was at 99.1 percent. The collection on new loans in financial year is healthy at 99.5 percent. The restructured book carries contingent provisions. Exposure to stress telco has now come down from 3 billion, 30 billion to 18.45 billion, along with multiple positive developments in the telecom industry. Overall, gross NPA for the bank has moved down from 2.48 percent to 2.27 percent quarter on quarter, and net NPAs were down from 0.71 to 0.64 percent quarter on quarter with a PCR of 72 percent. While we saw slippages from restructured book during the quarter, we have made fresh provision through P&L rather than using utilizing contingent provisions. Overall, our contingent provision, excluding the specific provision, remains as Constant at 3,328 crores. Our loan-related provisions are at 3.5 percent of loans or 152 percent of the gross NPA. Our SMA one and SMA two book was at 43 basis points and 16 basis points respectively. Collectively, SMA one and SMA two have reduced from 84 basis points. For the quarter was at 1,401 crores, growing 13% quarter on quarter and 51% year on year. Our CRAR, including profits, remain healthy at 18.42%. Return on assets crossed 1.5% mark during the quarter, and return on equity improved to 11.9%. In conclusion, we completed the second year of the three-year trading cycle. We closed the year. putting the and most of the external internal and external concern and steadily pivoting towards growth while the operating re- environment remain volatile due to russia ukraine conflict we are committed to achieving our planning cycle five ambition our priorities for the coming year would be maintaining disbursement momentum our areas of domain expertise that is vehicle microfinance and diamond has seen good recovery in disbursement The impact of increased fuel prices has not been evident yet, including this month so far. Our corporate and consumer to business too are contributing towards growth. Overall, we would aim to achieve our PC5 growth ambition of 15 to 18 percent compounded growth for the financial year 21 to 23 period. Retail liabilities. We continue to believe and execute on retail liabilities-driven growth strategy, particularly through retail deposit. we are investing in a physical as well as digital distribution to maintain our liability momentum digital we have launched three out of the plant five initiatives industry 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 credit merchant acquiring and finance vehicle finance portal these will be scaled up during the year the other two uh, millennial and sme offerings are planned for launch in the current year launch and scaling of new initiative we are adding new growth boosters across assets and liabilities business asset side to see launch of home loan scale up of tractor affordable housing merchant acquiring and small corporates liability side to see scale up of affluent nri agency business and wealth management improving financial matrix we have aligned the balance sheet towards rising interest rate scenario we will try towards maintaining a healthy nims and operating profit margins the provision should come down with covid impact getting behind us we believe that the coming year should see underlying profitability of the franchise with improved growth we can open the floor for question and answer thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Maru Kajania from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, Good evening. Good evening, sir. Maru, sorry to interrupt you, but your audio is not very clear. So, hi. Hi, hello, sir. So, I just want to check on your outlook on margin. Aru, uh, we believe we've always given a guidance of uh, two margin guidances which we've given. One is on net interest margins. We've given 4.10 to 4.25, and that's where we are uh, overall for the year. And we've given a PPOP guidance of greater than 5%. We ended the year at 5.8%. Sorry, sir. And uh, is it such a uh, irrespective of the rate cycle, uh, that should be the margin guidance, correct? Yeah, that's what I said. I think uh, we believe that uh, that uh, we will be range bound on the in in, in these uh, uh, we will be range bound in these two margins, uh, irrespective of the rate cycle as of now, because we have the ability to change a product mix or the portfolio mix. Sorry, Ramsha. Just in terms of credit cost, uh, is it uh, obviously, you are scheduling the balance sheet by providing more and not drawing up. But at what point in time will you start drawing down? We have to wait for the right opportunity. I think uh, we have not done it this quarter. Who knows that we may, once we see that the flows are happening from the from the restructured book at that appropriate time, we will take a call. Uh, it's not necessary that we may drop. We may just keep the contingent provisioning. Holding on. It depends on uh, how we are seeing the flows, and we've given a guidance on the flow, on the credit cost of 120 to 150 basis points. And I think uh, you will start seeing that range bound activities from us going forward. Varansha, well, just the last question. You were sounding constructive on private capex, uh, which is not the case with other banks. Uh, so, I mean, when do you see that kicking in? So we've said that it will happen over a period of time. We've not said it will happen immediately. So we, so while we see some uh, green shoots coming up here or there, but I think the public capex will come up before the private capex. Uh, but we, we do see in private sector also some one or two uh, proposals keep on coming to us. Uh, we have Sanjeev Anand here. He can answer that question. Sanjeev, would you? Yeah, so actually uh, we have been speaking to a lot of our clients and everyone over the last 4-5 months, I would say at least 60-70% of the large strategic clients we spoke to have talked about CapEx now because they are pretty much reaching their uh, you know capacity utilization. So definitely in the coming 5-6 months we will see a, a big uh, boost out there. Okay sir, thanks a lot. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, congratulations uh, uh, for good set of numbers. Uh, uh, so, uh, firstly, in terms of for the entire uh, deposit, okay, the way the environment is uh, uh, shaping up, uh, liquidity is going to be tight, and in fact, uh, many of them are raising rates as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, and so, how should we look at our retail plus uh, uh, casa? No doubt you have edited in terms of uh, effluent and RI uh, to be the focus segment. But how should we look at the overall uh, retail and casa? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, should we see like uh, there will be reliance on the bulk deposits in case we get towards our growth guidance of uh, 18 odd percent? Yeah, we are very clear, Sunal. We want to get our retail franchise correct, and we've given a guidance on PC5 to be between 45 and 48% on a retail uh, SP, S, oh, SL, what are we called? LCR, LCR ratio. I believe that we are on our way. If you look at our rates, capital deposits rates, we're still higher than the, than the uh, four private sector banks. And I think uh, we will continue to be at that range. And I think uh, while people may catch up, 
I think we will. We we have also positioned ourselves correctly in the two-year plus. We have been mobilizing deposits in the two-year plus bucket to make sure. And I think so. We 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 got some initiatives behind it to make sure that our retail growth in liabilities is enough to catch up. Our our bulk deposit. are today at 21% of our overall portfolio and we want to continue to believe that we don't want to raise that in fact maybe it should go down and uh, we believe that we can manage the margins and the nims in the range which we have set so overall even in rising interest rate environment the way our book is more skewed towards uh, uh, say the fixed rate given the vehicle uh, plus maybe on the mfs still we would be uh, confident in terms of uh, Uh, no impact in terms of the lagged uh, uh, repricing being there. See what happens is if the interest rates are rising and we are rising, also the MCLR or the external benchmark rate does rise. So there may be a 30 to 60 day gap, but you may catch up with that with that over a period of. Uh, two months or three months. That's number one. Number two, the new fixed rate book. We are also seeing in the vehicle as well as we are seeing a rate increase and cautious rate increase uh, happening in that segment. What was gone down to seven, seven and a half percent is now at eight, eight and a half percent happening already on the commercial vehicle side. Number three, the mix of the mix on the fixed rate book is also changing. So on the vehicle side, for example, used vehicles and used cars are coming up to make up the the mix change. in microfinance you diversified the microfinance into uh, merchant acquiring business where 2000 crores is now at 23.6% so you continuously change the mix to make sure that your margins are are are, are taken care of sure and in case uh, the environment gets tight in terms of deposits uh, and mobilizing mobilization of the deposits what would be our priority would it be in terms of sacrificing some growth uh, retaining the margin or maybe investing more in terms of the scaling up the uh, franchise and still try to get towards the uh, growth guidance which is there i think we are looking at long term i think we will continue to scale up our franchise we will continue to invest in our franchise we are going to launch a new initiatives on the liability front which is on the digital capability completely and hopefully we should be able to launch in the next 7 months which should give another impetus to our growth in the liability business so we are consciously and doing a lot of things to make sure that we are ahead of the curve in liabilities as we go ahead because we have been a little bit behind sure and one last question in terms of mfi uh, so uh, how is the leadership out there now uh uh post uh, uh, maybe uh, we saw the change which has been there uh and how how should uh, uh, the entire business be now driven going forward yeah so i think uh, i've answered this question before also and i said that we had a very strong succession succession planning in place to take care of any leadership issues which may have come in the microfinance segment so like i said i think we have put an executive vice chairman jay shridharan there who has managed the business very very well sitting there and i think uh, we've been able to not hire a ceo but each business had a distinct ceo and has been able to manage we are still contemplating whether we need a ceo on top of the three ceo and another executive vice chairman so i think the way the business has stabilized we have not felt the need for it right now though we have two external candidates secondly i think on the on the on the processes and the governance side we had uh, an internal resource shrinivas bonam who was actually from the microfinance industry who brought stability into the operations and the whole financial accounting and the operations bit of it the third thing which we did was i think we in house the senior management team into the bank and i think uh, i think that created a lot of stability in the in the in the workforce and there is an opportunity for others also to move inside the bank without taking the agility of the of the microfinance industry having said that i think if you if anything to go by this quarter has been a representation of how microfinance industry will look we have seen very good growth uh, quarter on quarter and year on year on this business we believe we believe that uh, uh, that this business will continue to grow at about 27 to 28% year on year and we believe that the issues of quality of the portfolio are behind us and we should come back to 2.5% to 2 to 2.5% on the credit costs having said that also 
uh, I must compliment and I must inform that MR played a very constructive role with us as a consultant. He guided us during this time and his term ended with us on, on, on March 31st. He continues to be, he continues to be available if we require him to be, but with mutual consent, we, 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 he said that now that the work is done, we can continue and, and, and create a new organization. So I think uh, that's where we are and I think uh, the organization is now pivoting towards what it was supposed to be a process-driven, technology-led group as we go forward. Okay. Thanks. Thanks and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the end of Manish Shukla from Access Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, firstly, on credit deposit ratio, uh, you're significantly below where you were earlier and much below your uh, PC5 target also. So how do you see credit deposit ratio moving for you? So this is a cautious call. I think uh, at one point we were 116 to 118% and we were beat, beaten down. So I think uh, we should move. We've always said our, our target is to be between 88 to 92% and we will get there. As, we, as the credit credit growth comes back and we are, what we are pivoting towards growth, you would see us moving to 88 to 92%. <laughs> and what part of the asset book would be floating in nature for you today? Around 50% is fixed rate as you know, uh, the vehicle finance, micro finance and parts of credit cards. Uh, balance 50% um, is the predominantly corporate uh, which largely is a variable rate book. Within that also there is a short term book which uh, by nature is a uh, floating rate. So yeah, broadly 50% of the book is fixed rate, balance is uh, variable. And the fixed rate book, uh, what will be the average tenor? So fixed rate, you know, vehicle finance business average tenor would be around 24 to 26 months. Uh, microfinance is typically a one year uh, book. Okay. Uh, last question uh, is the uh, fresh additions of NP of 1742 crore in consumer. Uh, can you split it across uh, segments, please? Yeah. So I'll uh, let me just give you. Uh, think of this half slippage. So I think uh, the slippages on uh, consumer are 553 crores, which happened from CFD business. Secured retail was was about uh, 212 crores. Unsecured was 162 crores, and MFI was 815 crores. And uh, the net net numbers and the net numbers were 239 crores in CFD, 148 crores in secured, 116 crores in unsecured, and 696 crores in MFI. Okay, all right. Thank you. There are no questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nathan Agrawal from Motilal Oswald Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, Mr. Congratulations on good results. Uh, carrying over on the slippage number, like, uh, in the MFI, we still had a pretty elevated slippage. So, just wanted to understand if uh, uh, this this like is done, and are we going to see a normalized slippages from MFI 23 beginning, or is it still going yes. to take time? No, we said that we should be in the range of two and a half percent on on the credit cost as we move along. That's what our our guidance is, and this is where we will be. And, but just wanted to understand if this is going to be back-ended improvement or... Uh, no, 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 no. So, so from quarter, see what you saw in quarter three was the maximum. In quarter two, you saw, uh, quarter four, you saw half of it. In quarter quarter two, you will see another half of it. So I'm just saying you will just see it going down. Because there is no, the 30 plus bucket is 800 crores only. So it's just going to go down as we move forward. Right. And secondly, on the vehicle business, how do you see the growth trends over FI23? We, we have been running flat, covered up the, like the loss that was going on earlier in terms of growth. How is this position to grow on it? Hello. See, I'll tell you what has happened on the vehicle if you go back four quarters or maybe two quarters below, we were not growing at all in the, in the business. And I think uh, we were we were actually having an issue of uh, you know excess uh, you know running down of the book. I think what we've seen now is disbursements catching up on quarter three and quarter four. And of course the quarter four was a two percent growth. But going forward, I think uh, I have Sridham here who heads the vehicle finance unit. He's taken over from Partha. So let him let him just answer this question for you. It will help you get the answer correctly. Yeah. yeah. 
కమర్షియల్ వెహికల్ యాడ్ వాట్ యూ కాల్ కోవిడ్ టూ విచ్ వాస్ వెరీ ఫేటల్ అండ్ పీపుల్ హ్యాడ్ వెరీ డిఫికల్ట్ టైమ్ రన్నింగ్ ద వెహికల్స్ సో పోస్ దట్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ రన్నింగ్ ద వెహికల్ క్వైట్ వెల్ లైక్ ఈవెన్ డెస్పైట్ ద డీజిల్ ప్రైస్ ఇంక్రీస్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు రన్ ద వెహికల్ అండ్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు పే మోర్ దాన్ వన్ మంత్ ఇన్స్టాల్మెంట్ దో దే ఆర్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు లైక్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఎంటైర్ త్రీ మంత్స్ డెఫిషియట్ వాట్ హస్ బీన్ లైక్ విచ్ హస్ హ్యాపన్ డూరింగ్ ద కోవిడ్ టూ సినారియో బట్ దే ఆర్ బీన్ పేయింగ్ మోర్ దాన్ వన్ ఇన్స్టాల్మెంట్ అండ్ ద పోర్ట్ఫోలియో ఇస్ లుకింగ్ గుడ్ అండ్ మంత్ మంత్ ఆన్ మంత్ like uh, the war dues are coming down but for commercial vehicle the rest of the field like lcv construction equipment they are doing very very well even the recovery is good and also the people are uh, looking at uh, new purchases and we are also looking at improving our market share and uh, presently we are looking at also affordable housing as a good unit and we are trying to invest like more money in that uh, segment thank you sure thanks and uh, lastly uh, on the liquidity coverage ratio now that has declined almost 20% over the past two quarters why so we, we are losing your audio we are not able to hear you properly sorry am i am i audible yes yeah, yeah. sorry i was asking on the liquidity coverage ratio that, that, that has declined almost 20% over the past two quarters so how do we see this and can this limit the overall balance sheet growth in fi23 so we are we are at 127% on average on the lcr right now and i think uh, it's a question of how much of retail liabilities are we able to mobilize and i think we said that we we got initiatives and we done all in fact in a bad year when the nr flows were down we still been able to grow our uh, um, lcr we are able to maintain our lcr i think uh, uh, we will continue to grow this up. the second thing is please understand if you look at our balance sheet we have an excess cash sitting there of 50000 i think uh, we are able to manage our business well and i think we should be able to manage the lcr as we move forward Yeah, regulatory requirement is 100 percent so and if you see all peers banks also i mean they have come off and you know there's an average so it may not translate to the 50 or thousand that you see as excess cash because this is done on an average basis so if you see the enr lcr it will be like uh, 137 percent so that's where we are but like to like yes uh, we are around 15 20 uh, percent down as what you rightly said as per disclosures and i think yeah that's a level that i think consciously we are seeing how to utilize our excess cash so sure. thank you so much and wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jay mundra from bnk securities please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, on on li- i have couple of questions first on liability uh, i think we had earlier stance that um the loan growth will be preceded uh, by deposit growth uh, if you can just uh, refresh the guidance on both uh, loan growth and deposit sir and uh, uh, and do you see a case for um, higher competition in deposit given the largest private banks you know is going to get more aggressive in deposit mobilization so i think there will always be it's a big market i don't don't assume that you know there will not be enough uh, size for every our asset growth even if we grow at whatever percentage we need to grow yeah at 20% we come from a very small base so i think we don't need so much of you know growth and i think we are doing enough initiatives to back back the 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 retail deposit growth in my opinion so, so in my opinion if we are looking at 15 to 18% cagr growth on the loan our deposit growth will actually be more than the 15 to 18 retail liabilities will be greater than 15 to 18% cagr uh, year on year so we will continue to grow at that level sure understood um, okay and sir on on asset quality uh, especially on real estate uh, would you would you say that real estate is also a bit of a domain of the bank because in terms of size maybe on relative basis that is also as big as uh, james and jewelry um, of course you have not put out that as a domain of the bank but i just wanted to check your view uh, 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 are you are you comfortable growing in that uh, segment and uh, uh, how would you assess the riskiness uh, of that book at present so it depends on how, what you call as real estate 
So a lot of people define real estate differently. We don't have a mortgage portfolio today. So we, we lot of banks are much bigger than us on the real estate business. So if you are defining real estate as commercial real estate, I think we are very selective on that real estate book. And I think uh, it has done very well for us, which stood the test of time, has uh, stood, stood the, uh, and given us prof very profitable uh, growth. So we continue to believe in that segment. And I think, but we have a... We have internal yardsticks and uh, barometers and then what our portfolio would be. And that's defined in our board policy as well as our internal risk guidelines. Right. So, sir, on slide 11, you have put real estate commercial plus residential, which is 4.05%, which yes. I believe is the, your real estate um, developer because LRD is clearly the uh, separate line item of 2%. Correct. So I wanted to check a um, out of this real estate book, uh, which as per last Basel was around 8,000 crore. How much is restructured at present? Um, how much is NPA? And is there any other portfolio which is under uh, some sort of a dispensation? Not at all. There is nothing on the restructure, nothing on the NPA on this book. And I, I don't know about the restructure. Is there yeah, any? On the, uh, no, on restructure there is none. Uh, there was, uh, you know, only one account which had become NPH you recognized in the past. Other, as a performing, actually, during the last one or two quarters, it's been robust that we've been able to reduce exposure, get prepaid in some accounts, and able to book better new accounts because there is enough activity and positive activity. We closely monitor the overall concentration across the different parts, but uh, we have not seen any signs of stress. It's actually been a bit of a robust uh, period, and we would have seen rating upgrades in some of the larger real estate companies itself. Uh, you know, some of them have gone to the A category and better because of the large collections they've achieved. Yeah. You know, just to add, whatever our book was on April 20, when uh, COVID hit us, today as we talk, around 75% of that book has been churned, repaid or whatever it is. So it just shows the quality of the book. Okay. So, uh, it's, I mean, we have a very good mix. We have some 110 odd projects across residential and commercial, and they're all doing pretty well. I mean, there's no real concern out. No concentration, really. Yeah, and no but concentration. Different uh, regions, uh, different good builders, and uh, that's very beautiful. Sorry, I missed the bit on churn. So, what did you say? Uh, from April 20 to uh, now, uh, around. Is, uh, you know, our book, when COVID came in in April 2020, when there was this whole concern on that. So, since then, till now, in the last two years, Around 75% of our real estate book, both on the commercial and the residential side, has been churned. Churned means either repaid, prepaid, or we have sold it down, added some new this thing because you know we have an active sell down strategy in our real estate uh, portfolio. So uh, basically, what I'm saying is, it's a very, it's a very good quality book which we had onboarded at that time also, and it stood the test of time. And today also, it's a pretty well diversified, good quality book. Right. And sir, on LRD exposure, uh, would it be fair to assume that all of the projects uh, exposure here would be operational and none of them would be under any dispensation sort of a thing, right? So, uh, yeah. as of so now, we have two, two types. We have a construction period loan with a right to take up the LRD, but LRD being a highly competitive mar market, depending on the lessee, the rates, they don't work out, somebody else may take it over from us and a construction loan gets repaid. On our LRD book, which you have closely monitored, we did see initially some delays and vacancies, but the latest the portfolio is performing very well. Tenants are back, rentals are back, and there's no account which is in any stress. So promoters have also supported during this period when rentals were lower, but now the rentals are back at full swing, and there is demand. Actually, we're seeing fresh leasing at better rates. You would have read about that in the you know embassy had given a read and a read guidance that you're reading. There is good demand again. So the concerns that it may all move towards work from home and there won't be demand for commercial assets doesn't seem to have played out as much from what we're seeing in recent times. But it's highly competitive on the rate side, so we will be selective on the kind of transactions we've done. Great. And, and, and last thing, sir, uh, from my side, one is, I mean, if I see a large corporate book, uh, clearly uh, in rupees, absolute rupees crore, it has moved uh, from uh, let's say 44,000 crore, 40,000 crore to roughly 60,000 crore over the last four quarters. Uh, but if I look at your credit rating, um, the risk profile uh, um, uh, rating mix that you give, there is not too much of a, a change uh, on slide 11. So from YOY, you know, 26% of double B and below is only uh, less by 200 basis point. 
so uh, what does it tell you that uh, on incremental basis is the same as the outstanding basis or there is something else which i might which i might miss yeah. no so um, uh, first of all there is a um, we have mentioned on the slide that there is a little bit of reclassification on the corporate side as we have reorganized the business uh, the slide depicting large mid small is also reorganized and the growth rates uh, which suman mentioned in the opening remarks are adjusted for that reclassification so the large has grown 20% year on year that's one secondly the rating profile that we saw show on the slide 11 includes both fund and non fund based exposure and during the year we saw some cash back uh, guarantees being uh, getting repaid uh, so uh, plus combined to that there is a growth in small corporate and gems and jewelry and real estate which typically come in the triple b side uh, while the inherent uh, risk is quite low so those two have um, you know contributed into the loan uh, the rating mix uh, has been uh, what it has been shown in the slide 11 understood uh, understood sir in this last data keeping question we have shown this uh, security receipt portfolio which is given in the bsc uh, what is the provisions that you are carrying against that so net security receipt is 83 basis points against last quarter 85 basis points okay so 83 is net number right is, is that so yes okay great thank you sir and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Nilanjan Karpa from Namora. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good evening. Uh, two two questions. Uh, one is on uh, data keeping. If you can also give the restructured loan breakup, whatever is outstanding, across those five buckets that we historically mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let let me just give it to you. Uh, So our restructured book is about 6,172 crores as of now. Uh, CFD is 3,298 crores. Secured retail is 686 crores. Unsecured is 233. MFI is 995, and corporate is 961. 961. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks, Sumit. Um, and second question. Uh, you know, when I look at the uh, movement of uh, Uh, you know, uh, cost of deposits and cost of funds. At least this specific quarter, uh, cost of funds declined quite sharply by about uh, 18 basis points. Um, could you highlight, you know, what exactly happened when we compared to cost of deposits, which was down only six basis points? Yeah, we had some borrowings that were maturing, and they were contracted at abysmally low rates. The new borrowings that came in. So for five-year tenors, just to give an example, we got rates of so far plus a hundred basis points for five years tenor. So um, we had around three thousand or crores of maturity. Actually, uh, yeah, around three thousand crores of maturities on uh, on borrowings which got financed at uh, very low rates. I mean, uh, the spread would have been at least two percent lower than what they were existing at. That's interesting, sir. Uh, okay, and uh, on the asset side now, on the basically the yield on retail, which is basically flat at about fourteen dot eighteen, and if you, if you look at uh, you know the uh, loan book, there is a you know quite a sharp growth in microfinance, about you know eleven and a half percent sequentially. Uh. The business banking piece has also grown, right? And the others part, which also I guess is a little higher yielding book, has also grown. Uh, so across uh, other segments, are you seeing a higher, uh, you know, pricing pressure? So there is a pressure on 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 loans against property, which is there, and I think uh, that is also getting normalized because people are now getting back to normalcy at eight and a half percent. This was this was going at seven seven and a half percent, and we did not participate so much in this. So I think that's number one. Number two in the commercial vehicles, medium and heavy commercial vehicle side. I think there were some competitors who were buying market share at at a certain price, which we were not willing to do because risk-adjusted return did not make sense for us. But I think that's all coming back to normal, and we are seeing, we are seeing a normal season returning back, and people getting uh, much more uh, aware of the rising interest rates. Okay. Okay. Um, so business, as you know, does not have have any 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 you know you it's we do at 19.6 and there is no problem in that rate at all in the microfinance book. Right, right. Okay, great. And a final question. Um, 
you uh, there some resignations from top management team uh, but they still you know uh, yet to be disclosed or something like that no nothing of that sort i th- i just told you that one person which is the our advisor mr rao they did opt for a mutual separation because the work on the microfinance was done but otherwise uh, we have not seen uh, anything as for uh, sanjay malik who was on sabbatical for the last one year did decide not to join and he's moved on so that's what it is sanjay malik was our investment advisor yeah investor yeah so yeah. investor relations okay okay great thanks thank you very much and now hand the conference over to mr suman katpalia for closing comments okay so uh, thank you for joining the call um, um, i think uh, the bank i just want to leave some messages i think uh, the bank is progressing well on all performance metrics including getting future ready for the investments in digital and distribution the second message is the bank is i believe the bank is well provided towards asset quality and domains provide us a competitive edge our these copies that that we will be in the range of 120 to 150 basis point we will be in that range a competitive edge is the three domains where you say that big big guys survive we will be the big big uh, big uh, player in these three domains the true earning power of the franchise to start reflecting from the current year so we've had two years where we were uh, continue to do provisions and we've not shown our return on assets or return on equity i think the true earning power of the franchise to start coming back uh, you've seen quarter 4 we 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 delivered a 1.5% roa from 1.31 i think we are all set to what this bank was supposed to be and i think the next year should see a lot of what we have committed to the market being delivered thank you so much for your time and me and anurji sir are available if you need any clarification at any point of time thank you thank you very much on behalf of indusind bank limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you, thank you.